Hi, my name is Tori and I am a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in pelvic dysfunction, which means that I treat things that can go wrong around the pelvis, like bladder dysfunction, bowel dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, pelvic pain, things like this. Back in April of 2017, I made a video called How I Cured My Chronic UTIs Without Antibiotics. And then in May of the same year, I put out an update video because I was able to cure an acute UTI with D-Manos without antibiotics. One request that I've been getting a lot recently is to make an update video and to answer frequently asked questions. So I'm really excited to do an update video and I'm honored to have requests. It's like very exciting to have requests. So I'm super excited to update you guys. I essentially just looked through all of my comments on both videos and I compiled what I would consider to be a list of my most frequently asked questions. I am going to answer as many of the questions that I can as thoughtfully as I can here in this video, but I also made a blog post on my website answering all of the questions as thoughtfully as I could, but in a text version. Unfortunately, the description box below doesn't have enough room in it for me to put all of the questions and all of the answers in it, so what I'll do is I'll link to the blog post in my description box and I'll also put all of the questions that I answer in this video in the description box and I'll timestamp them so you can skip around and figure out the answer to any specific question that you have without watching the whole video if you don't want to. Also worth saying out loud, I am not sponsored by any of the products that I'm showing in this video or that I am talking about. So the number one question that I get asked is, are you still UTI free? Are you still not having UTIs? as often as you used to, which for those of you that haven't seen the first video, I was getting UTIs 10 to 12 times a year. It was ridiculous. And finding D-Manos really did change my quality of life. It was a really big deal for me, which is what prompted me to make that first video in the first place. So to answer that question, since April of 2017, almost two years ago, I am still UTI free, which is incredible. Since making that first video, to my memory, I believe I had two UTIs since making the video and now. I don't believe I've had a third. If I have, I don't, I don't remember it. Those two UTIs that I had since making the video, one of them I tried to cure with D-Manos, but I tried using the pills. In the video, I was using these now D-Manos pills preventatively. That was part of my preventative regimen back in the 2017 video. And when I got an acute UTI, I was like, oh, let me try and use the pills to cure it. And I did try and it ended up not really working. Like it made my symptoms a little bit better, but I ended up with the infection anyway. And it also gave me a headache to take the pills that frequently. So, the pills didn't work. But then I got another UTI and I tried curing that UTI using D-Manos powder, using the Cal brand D-Manos powder, and I was able to cure it. I caught the UTI really, really early and I got on the horse taking the Cal D-Manos powder and my UTI went away, which was insane. This difference in my ability to cure an acute UTI is what prompted me to stop taking the pills and start using the powder preventatively. So to recap all of that, I was using the pills preventatively. I got a UTI. I tried to use the pills to cure the acute UTI. I couldn't. I kept using the pills preventatively. I got another UTI. I tried to use the D-Manos powder, specifically the Cal brand, and I was able to cure the acute UTI. And then I stopped using the pills preventatively and started using the powder preventatively. And since I've been using the D-Manos powder instead of the pills, I haven't had a UTI that I can remember. Like if I've had one, I don't remember. I don't think I've had one. I would say that my second most frequently asked question is what is your current preventative routine? What are you doing preventatively so as not to get UTIs? So as I mentioned, since being able to cure an acute UTI with the powder, I replaced the pills with the powder in my preventative routine. So now I use that Cal brand D-Manos powder. I take one serving of the D-Manos powder every morning dissolved in a small glass of water. I usually guesstimate 
about how much one serving is now just because I take it every day so I've got a pretty good eye for how much one serving is. I feel like my, my phone's having a hard time focusing but a serving size is three quarters of a teaspoon according to this Cal brand. I'd say I'm probably taking between half and one teaspoon in the morning in my little glass of water and I take it on an empty stomach. That's another question that I get. Do I need a full stomach to take the steam annos? I'm not sure. I've not read anything suggesting that you do. I take it on an empty stomach no problem and then along with my one serving in the morning before I start my day if I do anything that day that qualifies as risky behavior which for me is still sex if I am wearing sweaty clothes for a long time like if I go climbing and then we go out to eat or something and I'm just sitting in my sweat for a while or if we go swimming for a long time and I can't change out of my bathing suit, or if I go out dancing and I'm wearing like a really tight outfit, essentially anything that I think might promote butt sweat making its way up towards my urethra, I will take another serving of D-Manos preventatively. Usually at most, this is two servings a day on a really risky day, maybe three, but honestly, it's usually no more than two servings in a day, which I don't know if you'll be able to read. It's so blurry on my screen, but it says directions, two servings a day on the back of my bottle. So I'm usually not taking more than the recommended dosage. I also would get the question a lot because in my very first video, I was taking probiotics and the D-Manos powder. I would get the question, hey, which supplement is it that works because I don't wanna spend money on both supplements. It's definitely the D-Manos because I've since switched up my probiotics, stopped taking probiotics, gotten back on probiotics, essentially changed up the probiotic use and the D-Manos is the thing that stayed consistent and I'm still UTI free. So I can confidently say, well, I think the probiotics are helpful, at least for me, it's the D-Manos that really did the trick or does the trick. And I just wanted to show you guys how I take it. I haven't taken my morning serving yet, so I figured I might as well do it in this video so you can see what it looks like. So I have my little glass and I have my D-Manos powder and usually I don't use the exact measurement, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to. Here is a full teaspoon. And so what I'll do is guesstimate like three quarters of a teaspoon. Got a pretty good guesstimate. And I just put that powder in my little glass. Got some water and I just put some water in the glass. Really not that much water. It doesn't take that much water. Then swirl it around and that's it. And another question that I get a lot is what does the D-Manos taste like? Sugar. It literally just tastes like sugar water. It's very sweet. Another question that I get often is if I have a brand of powder that I prefer, and I do prefer the Cal brand, this brand, and that's only because that's the brand that I happened to find when I was doing my research. It had really good reviews. It's the brand that I use to cure that acute UTI that I made a video about. And so I've stuck with it just because it works for me. But I read all of my comments, or at least I really try to. And I've noticed that other women that have had a lot of success with D-Manos have also been using Now's powder, which are the pills that I was originally using. That brand also makes powder. And I think it might be a little more affordable and then there was one woman who D-Manos really made a big difference in her life, like a crazy big difference, and she did a ton of research, and she found uh, micro-ingredients to be a really good brand for her. So these aren't powders that I use, but I've heard really good things about them in my comment section. Another big question that I get a lot is if I think the pills are just as effective as the powder, and I would argue through my own personal experience, no. I think that the powder is probably more effective than the pills. At least this is the case for me and my personal experiences. Another, I wouldn't say question that I get, but people just offering me their ideas as to why it is that I got chronic UTIs to begin with. I've had humans suggest that I have a latex allergy, which I guess would imply that I'm using condoms but I wasn't using condoms, it's not a latex allergy. I've had humans imply that I have some sort of vitamin B deficiency, which maybe, but I, that's, not, that's not why I was getting chronic UTIs. I've also had humans suggest that my fiance should clean his penis better, 
which is always my favorite suggestion and definitely a common misconception about how UTIs work, why women get UTIs. And so I wanted to answer the question, why did I get chronic UTIs with my best hypothesis? So it is my belief that the reason that I would get chronic UTIs has everything to do with my anatomy. So it's important to zoom out a little bit here to better understand why I think the reason that I got so many UTIs is because of my anatomy. Most UTIs are caused by a bug called E. coli. This isn't true of all UTIs, Dimanos only works if the UTIs that you're getting are caused by E. coli. Mine were always caused by E. coli. 100% of the time, every year in culture I got, all of my UTIs were E. coli. E. coli is the bacteria that lives around your buttocks. This is true in men and women. It naturally lives there. There's no reason that it shouldn't be there. But if you think about all of the risky behaviors that I've outlined, if you think about sex, if you think about wearing a wet bathing suit, if you think about hanging out in sweaty clothing for too long, if you think about dancing in really tight clothes and, and these sorts of things, you can see that all of these scenarios make it really easy for butt sweat to travel and make its way towards your urethra. So really quick anatomy review View, your urethra is the tube that connects to your bladder and so when you urinate when you pee you're peeing through your urethra not your vagina there's actually a hole that lives right above the vaginal canal and that hole is the exit end of your urethra urethral anatomy varies greatly woman to woman some women have longer urethras some women have shorter urethras the average is like four centimeters but it varies woman to woman. Some women have urethral openings that are really close to the surface, like really close to the external skin, and other women have urethral openings that are kind of tucked up in the vaginal canal. All of this being said, I think my guess is that I have a shorter urethra, which means that E. coli don't have to travel as far up in order to plant in my bladder and cause an infection. And I know, because I know my own anatomy, that my urethral opening is much closer to the surface of my skin as opposed to deeper inside of my vagina. So if you think about butt sweat making its way towards my urethra, it doesn't have to move as deep into the vagina to get there. That's my hypothesis. I think it's my anatomy. Huge common misconception where people think that it's their partner's penis, that the penis isn't clean enough. Penises shouldn't have E. coli on them unless you are performing anal sex together, in which case if you are, just make sure that if you're gonna go from anus to vagina, that you really, really clean the penis before you do. Next big question that I get all the time is, how did I cure an acute UTI with the manos? And I did make a video about this, but the quick and dirty summary of it is, that I used the powder, the cow powder, not the pills, and I took one serving of that powder every three to five hours. And this is while I was awake. I didn't wake up at night to take the powder. I've had that question asked a couple of times. This was only during my waking hours. Also, while I was trying to cure the acute UTI, I didn't perform any risky behaviors. I abstained from sex. I didn't go swimming. I got out of my sweaty gym clothes really, really quickly. Things like this. I also think it's worth mentioning that after having more UTIs than I can count, so many UTIs in my life. I am really, really good at recognizing the symptoms. I know exactly when it's a UTI. I can catch it way early and I'm confident in my ability to be like, there it is. I know exactly what this is. I have a UTI. And I think that that leads really nicely into the next question. The next question I get a lot is something along the lines of, I tried to cure an acute UTI with the Demanos powder and while my symptoms are better, I think I still have an infection. How long should I go before using antibiotics? It has been my experience that you need to catch the infection early. If you try using the Demanos for, I would say, three to five days and you think you still have an infection, I wouldn't play with it. You don't want to risk a kidney infection. I would get some antibiotics and then try using the Demanos preventatively. But all of that being said, I do want to say that if you're a woman who gets chronic UTIs, trust your gut. When it comes to detecting UTIs, a 2002 study found that women with recurrent cystitis, which just means recurrent UTIs, 
can accurately self-diagnose and self-treat a UTI as accurately as any physician. I'll link to that study in the description, but if this is you, trust your gut. You can catch this infection early, you know what it feels like, and we've got the research to prove that you are just as accurate in diagnosing as a physician. Another common question that I get is, what do you use besides the D-Manos to prevent UTIs? One big thing that I do is after any sort of oral or penetrative sex, I pee, even if it ruins the mood. After I urinate or defecate, I make sure to wipe front to back, not back to front, because again, I don't want any of that butt sweat getting to my urethra. And as I've mentioned before, I get out of wet or sweaty clothes as quickly as I can, again, so as not to encourage butt sweat to make its way toward my urethra. Okay, I'm gonna address three more of the most frequently asked questions that I get, and then the rest of the most frequently asked questions are pretty easy answers. So for the sake of the length of the video, there will be some frequently asked questions with answers in the description below, but there's three more that I wanna make sure that I address in the video itself. One of those questions is, is D-Manos safe for diabetics? And there is conflicting research. There is some research available that says that D-Manos doesn't cause a big spike in your blood sugar, which would imply that it is safe for diabetics, but then there is other research that says the contrary. And so I think that if you have diabetes and you're interested in taking D-Manos, you need to talk to your physician and figure out what's best for you. Another big question or concern I should say that I get is something along the lines of, I heard that D-Manos can cause kidney infection or kidney failure or kidney disease disease. What do you think about that? Are you worried about your kidneys? From what I've read, my understanding is that really high doses of D-Manos can potentially cause some sort of kidney damage, but I rarely take more than the recommended dosage. And I'm an otherwise healthy young adult. I don't have any sort of kidney disease or diabetes or anything that might compromise my kidney function in my past medical history. And so I'm not worried personally about my kidneys, but if any inkling of you is worried about your kidneys, I think you should consult with your physician. Okay, last question that I get a lot is, D-Manos isn't working for me. Why? D-Manos only works if the infection is caused by E. coli. If you get your urine cultured and it is not E. coli, that is the reason that you have a urinary tract infection, D-Manos is not going to work for you. So get your urine cultured, figure out whether or not E. coli is what's causing your UTI, and if it's not E. coli, D-Manos is not gonna do the trick. Whew, okay, thank you so, so much for watching. If you liked this video, if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel for more content surrounding pelvic health. If you have any content suggestions, a question that you want me to answer, a topic that you want me to cover, please drop that suggestion in the comment section below. All right, thank you again so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.